Hello, welcome to my studio. I'm just about to uh, start painting uh, on this big 4x7 piece and I'm going to do a time lapse of it. Uh, but I thought what I would do is answer a lot of the questions that I get uh, before I even start. Once I start the time lapse and I'm explaining what I'm doing, there's not a lot of time to explain what I've done before. So a lot of the questions I get asked every time I do this, I'm going to answer them now. So the first one that I usually get asked is, why do I paint on a red canvas? Um, and so the, the simple answer is, I've tried painting on every other color canvas, tone canvas, and red just works for me the best. I can get into the why of that, and that is it because of the way that I paint, which is very much like a mosaic where I paint in patchwork strokes, I don't paint in big washes, you get the canvas showing through in a lot of places. Um, so if it's a white canvas, I would have all these pieces of white showing through that is very distracting. Um, but because I end up painting in very vivid, bright colors, and I'm trying to um, describe the effect of the sun shining through the trees, those little bits of red showing through give it a real sparkle. So I've just found that for me, that's what works best. Should you use red? Um, no. What you need to do if you're a painter is try every color and see what works best with you because depending on how you paint and the color palette you use, you may have a totally different color that works good for you. So that's why I paint on a red canvas. Now in terms of my preparation, um, what I do is I tone my canvases with fluid acrylic um, with alizarin crimson. Uh, it's actually quinacridone uh, a crimson, but it's very similar to an alizarin crimson. That kind of seals the canvas. Um, it gives me that mid-tone. And then I use black fluid acrylic um, to block in my tree shapes. And that's all of the painting that I will then do in acrylic. You can actually do this in oils as well. The only reason I like doing it in acrylic is it dries quickly. If I do it in oils, I've got to wait a week for it to dry before I can paint over it. And I like typically once I start a piece to just work on that. Um, another question I get a lot is, do I just paint trees and why do I paint trees? And it's like, yeah, pretty much I paint trees. I used to be a real high realism painter and painting a lot of other subjects, in particular a lot of portraits, a lot of cityscapes, uh, animals, what have you. Um, and I just really was found myself drawn more and more towards painting abstractly. And when you're painting a portrait, the pencil line is a tyrant. You know, if that's where the eye is and the eye goes, you must maintain that line. When I'm painting forest scapes um, or treescapes, I can put the branch wherever I want. Uh, the, the, the photo that I'm using as a reference is just kind of a guide that kind of gets me started. But from there, for me, it's all about composition. And this becomes very much an abstract composition that just is basically influenced by trees. And so that's why I like this. I can paint sometimes you know, four or five paintings from the same reference photo, and just by taking it one way or another, I can make a very different painting of it. So these, the trees allow me to just get lost in the design and the abstract qualities of it. So that's kind of how I started and what I'm, what I'm gonna do and why I paint trees. Now in terms of what do I use, I actually use the water miscible oil paints or water soluble. Now what that that's, doesn't mean they're not like acrylics or watercolor where you can thin them with water. Um, what it means is you can clean your brushes with soap and water. Um, so for me that's a big thing, uh, not having the solvents in the house and the smell is much much less than if you were painting with traditional oils and using turpentine or turpenoid. And I use a variety of different brands. The problem with these oils, so because we don't use turpentine to thin them down, is it's like painting dry brush when you just paint on a canvas. So what I found works really well is they also make, so this is a Holbein Duo uh, painting, oil painting medium that's also water soluble. You can get water soluble linseed oil, uh, a bunch of these different mediums. You need to try them to find what works best for you. I put a very thin coating of the oil on the canvas. Once again, once I have my underpainting done, and you want it just enough so that it kind of glistens and that there's a coating over the entire canvas, but you don't want it to the point that it actually drips down. Uh, and that actually takes a fair bit of elbow grease to do. And the brush that I found best for doing this is this one here. This is a Sterling Edwards, actually it's a watercolor brush, a stiff bristled watercolor brush. But this is what you need, a brush with really short, stiff bristles that can really move the paint around and give you that thin coating. So I do that before I start, and what that does is it allows the paint to slide on much easier. Um, and, and then I get my palette ready. So you can see here, this is the palette that I'm going to use to start. 
and I've got all the colors that I plan on using already pre-mixed on here. And I've got a generous amount of paint. When I used to teach, I used to see people just kind of portioning out these little itty bits of paint. You can't paint that way. And I know you don't want to waste paint. Um, but that's where something like this comes in. This is a Masterson Stay Wet palette. It's like a giant Tupperware container that perfectly fits the palette paper. So when I'm finished for the day, uh, I put it in here and seal it up and your paints will stay good for four or five days. Um, and this is also good for acrylics. So that's kind of my setup. Um, I'm going to be painting with uh, stiff bristled hog, hog hair um, bristled brushes. And again, I'll talk more about what I'm doing while I'm doing it once we get into the, uh, the actual time lapse. If you want to learn more about how I paint and why I paint the things I do and why I do the things I do, then I encourage you to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can link to it via my website at www.timpacker.com or just go to YouTube and search Tim Packer Fine Arts. That's the name of my channel. So anyways, that's the explanation. And now I'm gonna get started and uh, we can see the time lapse. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the, uh, the foreground leaves. So I'm kind of painting the leaves that are closest to me first, uh, starting with the uh, reds and the oranges and, um, and then into the yellows. And it's important to note here too that I'm not using the same red or the same orange or the same yellows. I've got a variety of uh, shades of that mixed. So there's still variety in the leaves. And then I wanna go in and just kind of resolve that sun area a little bit and then start putting in some of the darker foliage, some of the, uh, the greens and the uh, kind of the greenish yellows. And again, I'm trying to create pathways for the eye so that your eye kind of is encouraged to move around the painting. That's the one thing we really want um, to happen in a finished painting is have the viewer's eye move around it. And then when I'm uh, totally happy with the uh, foliage, then it's time to start painting the sky. And if you look at my palette, you can see that I've got a variety of different colors from uh, oranges and pinks and greens and blues and mauves, all mixed at about the same value, the same lightness. And what I'm doing is painting different um, pathways of these colors, these big sweeping curves that come from the outside in towards the sun. Um, and starting with the kind of darker, cooler colors of the outside of the painting, um, and those curves get kind of narrower and narrower as we get in towards the sun. And then doing the opposite, coming away from the sun, painting with the lightest, warmest colors out towards um, those cooler um, areas. And what that does is provides like an overall gradation as, as you move in closer to the sun, everything gets lighter and warmer. Uh, and that just really, really helps the glow. All of these various um, big curves of different colors, again, they just encourage your eye to move around the painting. And so once I've finished the sky, then I've got to start looking at the bottom foliage. And same thing, I, I'm always thinking about trying to create pathways for the eye to move through the painting. And we've got, uh, we've got to put in some of the darks in here because I know that's really going to help make the uh, birches pop. I'm also just finally resolving the skyline. I brought the sky uh, holes down to pretty close to where I knew it was going to be, but uh, just need to finally resolve that. And then it's time to get onto the birches. And I knew for sure that uh, four trees were going to be birches, um, but I'm not sure if it, we need any more, and if so, how many. So I'll finish these four birches uh, first, um, and then I'll make that decision. And with the birches, it's important that as we move towards the sun across each birch, um, the sun side is lighter and warmer, and the shadow side is cooler and darker. And I'm just going to kind of finish off the sun um, pretty close to finish. Um, and then take a look at this and decide how many more birches I need. And I decided I need a couple little ones uh, just to the right of the sun and then one big one on the right hand side and then I think we could use one just right in the middle there. And once I've finished all of this, then it's going to be time to uh, just kind of sit back, look at this and really try and figure out what I need to do to bring it to finish. Um, this is at this point in the painting, I tend to slow down um, in my decision making process and um, just kind of look at each individual thing. And here I'm just finishing up um, all of those little things that I talked about that, uh, that I needed to fix um, and make better. And uh, finally, it's uh, signing it. And this is actually a, a very tricky part of the process. It took me a lot of years of practice to get good with signing my name with a brush. 
um, but for me I have to do it on the floor and put something down to uh, steady my hand and uh, yeah once it's signed then I'll sit it on the mantle of the fireplace and look at it and decide if I need to adjust anything um, but I can tell you it's been a couple days since I finished it and I'm totally happy with this I hope you've enjoyed uh, following along with me um, it's gonna be weird going into the studio to start something uh, new uh, it's been two weeks that I've been working on this and that's about as long as I ever spend on a painting if you enjoyed this you can see more of my videos on my YouTube channel and I will see you next time